sometimes you, you struggle to find the silver lining. But when I get on calls like this and I see all of you uh, dynamic women who are handling business, talking to voters, making sure we get it done, not just on November 3rd, but now because people are voting across our country and that we tell the truth, that we're honest and we let folks know what, a, what is at stake. Um, I know that you all care about a whole host of issues um, from environmental justice from to gun violence. Um, and I just honestly want to say thank you. Um, when you do this work, you make uh, folks like me who are working on the campaign day in and day out, our jobs a whole lot easier. I was uh, a regional field organizer in 2011. Don't hold this against me in the state of Ohio. I'm from Ohio. Don't, don't hold it against me. <laughs> but we're all on the same party. <laughs> the, the Democratic Party is the only time I actually say go blue, right? Because I'm a bug guy. But um, but when I was a regional field you organizer, you got the colors on. You got the colors. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but when I was a regional field organizer in Columbus, Ohio, uh, in 2011, fighting for collective bargaining rights, um, fighting to reelect Barack Obama, it was the volunteers that sustained me. It was the volunteers and the leaders in the community that built that this effort to know what is possible in our country, and so. Tonight, as you do outreach to voters, as you talk to voters tomorrow, as you talk to voters probably this whole time, what you know, up until this point, um, just know that we, you're not alone. You may be in your home with your family or even by yourself like me right now, but you're not alone. We are stronger together. We are fighting together. It is women who are going to win this thing. Um, and we will get the job done. So Ms. Virgie, I also just want to say thank you for your leadership. Um, thank you for your guidance. Even when um, you don't know you're guiding me, you are guiding me. I need to update my bio because it's a little more than 10 years now, um, but I still <laughs> consider myself a young one and I, I, I'm young at heart, but we're going to win. We are going to win and we're going to win because we're going to talk to voters and we're going to organize and we're going to do what we need to do to win. So thank you all for everything that you do, that you will continue to do. And most importantly, we'll do on January 20th when we have a new president and vice president, we have made history and have a woman in the White House and we are ready to govern to get this country back on track. So thank you so much uh, and I appreciate you all. Thank you, Ashley, I'll be in touch. You are awesome, I love you dearly. And you know, I'm gonna put you on the, I'm gonna put you on the road with the Black Caucus also. I'm here anytime, we, anytime you need have, me. We have at least 10 more of these rallies in Michigan. Let's Thank do it. You. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ashley. We're still having a little bit of technical difficulty with the video that Simone sent us. So I'm gonna hand it back to Carol to introduce our MDP chair. Well, I just want to let you know how hard our chair has been working and the way she's worked her way up through the ranks. At one time, she did the one voice, one vote with President Barack Obama's campaign. Then she became COO of the Michigan Democratic Party. And now she is our illustrious first time black female chair. And I am proud to introduce you to Lavora Barnes. Oh, Carol Conway, thank you so much. You're so kind. Thank you, Ms. Virgie. Thank you to all of you for being here tonight. You know, this job I've got as chair of the greatest Democratic Party in the country is a terrific job, but it's a big job and it's an exhausting job. But I do it and I can do it because I know I've got all of you guys backing me up every day and every night, making sure that the world knows how great Michigan is and that we're going to win this thing for Biden and Harris, um, unlike what happened to us in 2016. This is it, 37 days out from the most important election of our lifetime. As a woman and a mother, I know why who we elect on November 3rd make matters so much more than ever before. I'm devastated by the loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and what might happen on the US Supreme Court, but now is our time to be ruthless. 
ruthless people. There's no room left for doubt. There's no time for anything other than leaving it all on the table and doing everything we can to get this man out of the White House. This is an opportunity to take back our country, to take back control of our country, to take back, as Joe Biden says, the soul of our country. We can't afford another four years of this president's madness and destructive behavior. And it's up to us, women, you know this, to stop him. Just look at his failed response to COVID-19. 200,000 people have died because this man decided that his reelection was more important than the lives of our mothers, of our fathers, and our children. It's no surprise to me that our only line of defense in Michigan has been a female Democratic governor and a female attorney general. Thank goodness for these women from Michigan and their unparalleled leadership. We need more women like Governor Whitmer, Attorney General Nessel representing us. And that's why we must reelect Bridget Mary McCormick to the Supreme Court and send Elizabeth Welch there to help her out. Because these women know what it takes to lead and represent us, and I know they will do it well. For them to win, we have to get out the vote. And it's so easy to vote. Remind everybody you know, it's easy to vote. You can go to your clerk's office tomorrow morning, fill out a ballot and vote. You can apply for an absentee ballot, fill it out, send it back by 10, 20, 20, 20, and get it back to your clerk's office in hand or use a drop box. We know that when people vote, Democrats win. So here, my friends, are your marching orders. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, Tell everyone you know, tell every stranger you pass on the street who might be a Democrat, vote straight ticket Democrat, and then look for the nonpartisan section of your ballot and vote for Bridget Mary McCormick and Elizabeth Welch for Supreme Court. Simple as that. Get it voted, get it in, get it done. We can do this. Let's get out the vote and elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, return Gary Peters to the US Senate, flip this damn straight state house so Governor Whitmer has one chamber that will work with her, and ensure that McCormick and Welch are representing us on the state Supreme Court. Thank you all for all that you've done. Thank you all for all that you're about to do. Thank you for your support of me and of our state party and of all of our candidates up and down the ticket. Keep up the good work. Don't get tired now, people. No, no time for tired now. Keep going all the way through to the end. We'll sleep in November. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we do have the video now uh, from Simone Sanders. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and play that. And then we'll go to uh, Robin to introduce um, our justice and hopefully future justice that are here with Can we turn up the sound? And we are standing on so lucky to have you. The Democratic National Committee, the Democratic Party is so lucky to have you. And we're gonna get great things done. So I am just excited for all the people, okay, that have joined this event tonight, and I really wish I was there. But Ms. Virgie, the next thing you need, I got you. So you just let me know. But thank you, thank you, everyone. And on behalf of Vice President Biden and Senator Harris, uh, we cannot do this without you. So early voting has started. Let's make our plans to vote early, in person, or vote by mail. And we are going to get this thing done and make our voices heard on Election Day. So to the people of Michigan, to my good friend, Ms. Virgie Rollins, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies, get it done, and we are going to get it done. All right, everybody, signing off, because I think I got to go do some work. Bye. All right. So I'm going to hand it now to Robin to introduce uh, Justice McCormick. All right.
right, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is attorney Robin McCoy, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Aunt Virgie, for all that you do. Thank you, Clarice and Eleanor, and for Hannah, who's holding up our tech support, and Carol as well. And so Justice McCormick was actually one of my professors in law school and uh, before the election in 2012. So she was a professor and associate dean at University of Michigan Law School. She headed up the Pediatric Health Advocacy Clinic, the domestic violence, uh, or she helped to launch the, the Pediatric Health Advocacy Clinic, the Domestic Violence Clinic, the Juvenile Justice Clinic. Um, I'm sure you all have heard a lot about the Michigan Innocence Clinic, which is the first non-DNA innocence clinic in the country. And to date, the, the clinic has exonerated 22 men and women. Uh, she continues to teach at the law school, as well as being the Chief Justice of the Michigan Supreme Court. Uh, so, and we also have with us uh, Ms. Elizabeth Welch, who is a candidate for the Michigan Supreme Court, and she's an attorney, a dedicated public servant, and a fighter for justice. Uh, she serves individuals, uh, nonprofits, small businesses. She counsels uh, helping municipalities recover cost of opioid um, epidemic, and uh, she's a long uh, time East Grand Rapids School Board trustee and a former president of the Michigan League of Conser Conservation Voters. So I'm going to turn it over first to Judge just uh, Chief Justice Bridget McCormick, who will then turn it over to Ms. Welch. Uh, so remember, we always say this about the ballot. I know people are voting now, they're voting early. Make sure you remember the judges because it makes a big difference in terms of us, uh, you know, having a progressive agenda in Michigan. So without further ado, I give you Justice Bridget Mary McCormick. Thank you, Robin. It is wonderful to see you. She was one of my students, um, about as good as they get. Um, and I am proud to be her friend and colleague now. And hi, uh, Aunt Virgie, good to see you. Good to see our party <laughs> chair and everybody else. This screen right here is the screen that's gonna get it done. I am so happy to see the women uh, looking back at me right now. Um, uh, it falls to us often and it's gonna fall to us again this time and we are gonna get it done. Now people are, talking a lot about the federal courts right now, including the U.S. Supreme Court, and I understand why. Um, losing Justice Ginsburg has been um, pretty heartbreaking this week. But everybody should know that 95% of civil cases and 95% of criminal cases are adjudicated in your state courts, not your federal courts. So who sits on your state Supreme Court is most important to people who live in the state of Michigan. A couple of years ago in Ohio, the Ohio Democratic Party was able to drop their drop-off rate, people who voted from the top of the ticket to the bottom of the ticket, just by a small percentage. And as a result, they won two Supreme Court seats. You all did this last time around, as uh, Ms. Virgie said, for Justice Megan Kavanaugh, who is now a, an excellent colleague of mine. We have an open seat this year. In addition to my re-election, everyone gets to book, cast two ballots, and Elizabeth Welch is a tremendous candidate. It's a name recognition race, so I am doing nothing except saying Elizabeth Welch between now and November 3rd. I'm gonna have an advantage on the ballot. It's gonna say Justice of the Supreme Court under my name, and everyone needs to remember Elizabeth Welch. So Elizabeth Welch, Elizabeth Welch, Elizabeth Welch. Thank you all for what you're gonna do in the next 37 days. I know women are gonna get us across the finish line on all of the important things on the ballot and especially justice. Justice is on the ballot. Thank you very much for having me tonight, and I will turn it over to Elizabeth Welch, soon to be Justice Welch. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chief Justice. It has been a privilege uh, to work with the Chief on the campaign trail. We are on a lot of events together. Thank you to all the women who pulled this together, Virgie, and all the um, longtime leaders in our state. Uh, my good friend, uh, Chair Barnes. Uh, thank you for the very specific shout outs. I am very appreciative. This race is one of those races that can be really hard to break through. And this is why you all are so important as the Chief Justice noted. We do have an opportunity and let me tell you a little more about that opportunity. It's not about just picking up one seat on the court. This is an open seat. It is the swing seat on the court. If you look at who nominated who, the justices run nonpartisan, but the parties do nominate them. The Chief Justice and I are nominated by the Michigan Democratic Party. The seat, she's running for re-election. There is an open seat. One of the longtime Angler appointees who then ran under as the Republican nominee for many years is retiring off the court. So if we pick this up, the court will be a majority 
of justices who are nominated by the Democratic Party. That doesn't mean decisions always go on partisan lines. There are many cases where they don't, but we do know who we elect matters, our value systems matter. That is really front and center with the death of Justice Ginsburg. A lot of issues are already decided in the state courts as the Chief Justice noted, but we can also look at the John Roberts court and some of his past decisions and guess that some of these things might be coming back to the state courts at a higher level than in the past. So who sits on state Supreme Courts all over the nation matters a lot. In addition to my law practice, I practice employment law. I've become a COVID expert, uh, just like every lawyer in different, you know, different spaces. It's impacted all of our world. So I've had to adapt uh, with my law practice on COVID issues. I also spent 15 years battling the Betsy DeVos agenda on public schools. I was deep in it. I was in the Capitol regularly, working really hard to support our uh, local schools and fighting for equitable outcomes for all kids. I'd love to take those same skills and join the Chief Justice at the court in the important work she's doing. Thank you for all of your help, everybody. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to me now to introduce uh, our next speaker, um, UAW Vice President Cindy Estrada. Uh, she's currently serving her third four-year term as UAW Vice President and currently heads the Fiat Chrysler and Women's Departments. Uh, she earned a degree in education from University of Michigan and had planned to become a teacher, but after organizing with the United Farm Workers Union on an internship, she was drawn to union organizing instead, uh, much to all of our benefit. Um, she's going to join us tonight and uh, speak a little bit more about uh, how we can all get involved and make sure that uh, we're turning out our union brothers and sisters to vote this fall. Hi, good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, thank you, Eleanor, and, and thank you, Virgie, and everyone on the call. You know, we, we're doing a lot in the UAW with our women's committee. In fact, we just had a really successful, I encourage people to look at it, um, our first ever virtual uh, women's conference. And it was nice because a lot of women, we typically do those conferences up at Black Lake, a lot of Zoom, there's a benefit to Zoom. I, I never thought I'd say this, but much more people can join in the conversation. And so we had a great panel with Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. Um, we had Ashante from Emerge, from National Emerge. And we had Heather McGee, who was also on, and it was hosted, it was moderated by Elise Bryant. And um, it was a great conference, and we came out of that conference, it, it dealt with race and class and what Trump administration is doing currently and, and the Republicans and creating a divide in this country around race. It's a story as old as time. Um, we're used to it in the labor movement. What's the best way to divide workers is, um, is to do that. And so we're not gonna fall for it. We have women working out there every day. There's three things we've asked our women in the UAW to do in their facilities, whether they work Parts plant, whether they work at the university, whether they work in healthcare. Um, and that is number one is to go out there and talk to 20 women to vote early. And then those 20 women will talk to 20 more. Normally we would do 10, but this is a different year. And um, this is the most important election in our lifetime, especially in terms of everything we fought for in the labor movement. The second thing those women are gonna do is then start posting that on Facebook, letting their coworkers know that they voted early. And that's the third thing that the women in the UAW are going to do with their women's committees across the country is to try and fill those polls. And so they're signing on to the website and they're encouraging others in their um, facilities to do the same thing. We know we don't want what happened in Milwaukee to happen anywhere. Um, that means we need poll workers. And so we've asked the women to really take that charge and to help us get poll workers across the country. So um, I just, for us in the labor movement and for, for all of us, this is, I, you know, I say this every election, the most important election, but if we don't continue um, to work twice as hard, I don't ever want to wake up in the morning and hear that President Trump is our president. I want to hear President Biden. And we're committed to doing everything we can to make that happen and to make sure that down the ticket, um, you know, we're, we're supporting all those candidates, especially our women candidates. We have a lot of union women running, especially from the AFT. And so we're going to do everything we can. Um, to, so anything you need from the UAW, please let us know on behalf of our president, Rory Gamble. Um, we're, we're all in, um, in, in doing what we can to make sure that we have Kamala Harris as our vice president and we have um, President Biden. So thank you.
Thank you so much. I'm going to turn it now to Marilyn to introduce our next speaker. Good evening. My name is Marilyn Connor, and I'm proud to introduce a young pillar of our community, the Honorable Mary Shetfield, President Pro Tem of the Detroit City Council. Thank you. So sorry about that. Um, can you all hear me and see me? Okay, great. So good evening, everyone. I'm just honored to be here. Thank you to Virgie and all of you beautiful, powerful women, um, the work that you guys are doing uh, to really get a new president and to uh, put our country in the right direction. So I thank all the work that you guys are doing. I really just wanted to attend to continue to encourage uh, all of us to use our platforms, our influence to make this final push. Um, as a young legislator myself, I know how important it is uh, to have the resources that we need only not only on the federal level, but that it trickles down from the state into the local uh, level. And so uh, I am a huge advocate for uh, making sure that uh, we turn up and turn out in this election. And so I just want to encourage those who are watching today. I think most of us that are watching, and I think most people know the importance of this election, but it's important that we continue to use our influence and spread the word so that it trickles down to our inner city communities and neighborhoods and people on the corners and streets that they know the importance uh, of this election. And so it is critical that we turn up the vote. Uh, and I also want to encourage people here to understand the importance here locally of also being poll workers. We are in need of poll workers. Uh, and we oftentimes talk about public service and how can we give back and how can we be of service. This is a great time to step up and get engaged. Civic engagement is extremely important. And for those who are attending and listening online today, I want to encourage you, if you want to get more involved in this election, think about possibly uh, becoming a poll worker. We want to make sure that we get these ballots processed, that we make it efficient, uh, and that we make people feel comfortable uh, voting whichever method that they choose. So I'm glad to be here. Uh, I think it's extremely important as we talk about the future of Detroit that we pay attention to this election on the federal level. Detroit has come back in a lot of ways. There's a lot of revitalization happening in our city. However, we still need resources. We still need housing. Uh, we still need issues fixed around water affordability. The list goes on and on when it comes to investing in generational Detroiters. Uh, and I do believe that uh, Joe Biden is the candidate who can help bring those resources back to the city of Detroit. And that is why I'm here. That is why I'm advocating. And I just encourage everyone to make sure that they make that correlation between a vote on the, on the national level to the resources and the improvement that we see on a local level. So thank you all for being here. I'm here to listen in, answer any questions. And again, let's continue to go outside of our networks because I can't stress again how important it is that we go outside of our traditional networks and those who are even listening on the Zoom. We have to reach out to people who we believe are not traditionally connected uh, and who may have apathy and don't want to vote. We have to continue to encourage them to get out and vote and not only to vote, but to stay engaged after they vote, to stay engaged, to hold people accountable uh, and to be more involved uh, in civic engagement in general. So glad to be here. Thank you ladies for all you all, uh, the work that you all do. And I'm looking forward to this upcoming election and us bringing it home uh, here in Detroit and, and uh, nationally. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, next, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, Alicia Bell. Uh, she is currently the chair of the Wayne County Commission. She was first elected to the commission in November 2002 as the youngest African-American woman to serve on a county commission in the entire country and is serving her ninth two-year term. Uh, so Commissioner Bell. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, ladies. I'm so honored to be on such a wonderful panel with such dynamic ladies. Virgie, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you all. This is going to be the election of a lifetime, as we've heard over and over again. Um, we say that every four years, but really this time, this is the election of our lifetime. I have uh, seventh and eighth grade uh, kids, and you know, I tell them, we have to make sure that we vote for them, for all of our children's sake. 
It was spoken about with the environment. So very important. It's time that we restore dignity, class, and intelligence to the White House. It's something when your children look at the President of the United States and raise their eyebrows because they can't believe that this person is who is the leader of the free world. It's also so sad when we have lost so much respect from other countries from across the world. We have got to get Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in the White House. And I know with this group of dynamic ladies on this call and everyone that is watching, we are going to do that because when we vote, we win and we all know that. And especially women, when women vote, we really win and we have to win big this time. I'm so happy the work that we're doing in Wayne County uh, with some of our CARES Act dollars, we were able to contact all of the other 42 communities, not take out Detroit because Detroit received their own CARES Act dollars. But the other 42 communities, we contacted their clerks and told their clerks that if they wanted a drop box, another drop box in their communities, we would foot the bill for that. And that was something that we did and many of the clerks around Wayne County took us up on that offer. So this is the first time I could ever remember us having so many different ways to vote. Of course, we want everyone to vote early. The absentee ballots came out. I received mine yesterday. People can put them in the mail, but only put them in the mail if you can do it two weeks before the election. We don't want to have any chances with the mail, but we are so proud that we were able to provide drop boxes across the county. So you can just take it to a secure drop box in your community and you can vote that way. You can go to your local clerk and you can vote that way. So there are so many means on how we can vote. There's no excuse and we're not taking any excuses. But it was so important what Councilwoman Sheffield just said about getting outside of our own circles. I'll tell you that I, I went to get my hair done a couple of days ago and the uh, young lady who wasn't that young told me she was going to vote for Donald Trump. And I had to say, hold up, wait a minute. What do you mean you're voting for Trump? Explain to me why. And she told me something that I thought was interesting. She said he seemed like a regular dude who understands regular people's issues. So of course I went through the litany of all the reasons why Joe Biden, Kamala Harris is going to be the better choice for her, for our community and for our country. And after I got through with her, she was like, okay, okay, I'm with Biden now. But there's so many people out there who they're not connected as we are. And you know, we have to talk to everyone because we have to let them know that this election is so important on so many different levels. We just have to find that trigger that relates to a person and then talk about that with them, whether it's environmental, whether it's um, increasing the minimum wage, whatever the issue is that's gonna connect with people, we have to find that talk to them about that and let them know that the Biden-Harris ticket is the ticket that's going to free us from the craziness that we've been living in for the last almost four years. So again, I'm just so happy to be here, so happy to do the work, make sure that we get everyone out to vote. There are so many different ways to vote, as I just stated. If there's anything you need on the Wayne County Commission side, please let me know. Um, I'm working hard every day because I am fighting for the lives of my children. The thing that I told people four years ago was, you may not like Hillary Clinton, but you have to vote for her because there are going to be Supreme Court justices that are gonna to have to be coming from the president and get nominated. And here we are with this current president nominating another justice to the Supreme Court. So we have to take it to different angles, explain why it's so very important, and then galvanize people and get them to vote. So again, thank you, Virgie. Thank all the dy dynamic ladies on this call. I'll say, um, you mentioned I was the youngest county commissioner. Well, that was a long time ago, so I'm so happy to say there are so many young Black African county commissioners across the country now, and I'm so proud of all of them. And we just have to keep on doing the work and make sure that we get the Biden-Harris ticket elected. And let me just say one more thing. Something that I've seen um, lately with this ticket that I didn't see four years ago with the excitement from groups from um, historical black college and universities and uh, Kamala Harris brings that out. She also brings us an excitement from uh, the black Greek letter organizations, which I'm a part of. So there's so much excitement, so much excitement that I did not see four years ago. And I hope that excitement translates to votes so that we can have a new White House, bring back better, Biden, Harris, 
as our next president and vice president of these United States. We can't wait to celebrate on January 20th. It's going to be a party, even if we have to do it virtually. So again, thank you all for inviting me. And anything that I can do, please, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Bell. Um, next, I'm going to introduce, now I, I apologize, I'm probably gonna mispronounce your name, Haya Ekbik, uh, who is a political assistant with the Peters campaign. Oh, Talk that was a little perfect. more about what That was perfect, thank you so much. Um, it's so great to be here tonight with all of you incredible women that I look up to. Um, Colleen, the powerhouse, Colleen Peters, wishes she could be here, um, but due to her schedule, she couldn't make it, so you have to deal with me, I'm sorry about that. But thank you so much to uh, Virgie, Clarice, and Janet for organizing this. It speaks volumes that when I first got on the call, I already knew like four people, both panelists and attendees. So we'd already talked about doing work in Michigan. So that just shows right off the bat how hard um, all the women in Michigan are working, not only for Senator Peters, for, but for Democrats all across the board. Um, just like everyone's saying, I don't need to reiterate how important this election is um, and just how fragile um, everything is, especially with the passing of Justice Ginsburg and all the strides that can be taken away if we don't vote carefully and work hard to change things in November. And the key issues that we all care about, I'm sure, um, that are on the ballot this year are protecting um, President Obama's legacy in the ACA, uh, protecting the right for women to make their own health care decisions for themselves, and just in general, how our country responds to the global pandemic that is hitting us even harder, it seems, these days, um, although that's hard to believe. And everything on the, is on the line, and that's why we need to really play hardcore defense in Michigan um, and re-elect Senator Peters. It's so great that Democrats across the country are trying to flip seats, um, Senate seats, to be uh, Democratic, but you can't win a game unless you play defense, um, and that's what we have to do here. He, Senator Peters has been recognized by the Luger Center and the Free Press as a proven bipartisan effective leader who just puts his head down and gets stuff done, um, whether that's fighting for affordable health care for Michiganders, lowering prescription drug prices along with it, protecting the Great Lakes, cleaning up PFAS, boosting American manufacturing, and then protecting public schools and small businesses. He does it all. He's a workhorse. He's not a show horse, like we say. And I think that's what we need now. We need public servants that just do their job. He's focused on putting Michigan first, like all of you guys are. Um, and we need to have his back and vote for him and advocate for him, for people um, who may not think the Senate is an important seat. We need to be those voices for them. Um, you can volunteer with us. I will drop the link um, in the chat and everything you need. Shout out to Ms. Barnes and her insane team at the One Campaign who are doing our field work. Um, they, we can't do anything without them. We can't do anything without women like you. Um, so I will drop all the information in the chat where to find a yard sign. Yard signs don't vote, but they signal to your friends and neighbors and people driving past like, oh, Senator Peters, I've seen his name, or you know, maybe I should uh, get my absentee ballot. Um, so every little thing, especially in a pandemic campaign is important. Um, I'll put my contact information, call me, beat me anytime with questions or if you wanna volunteer um, or anything like that. And just wanna say thank you again so much for inviting me to speak um, in lieu of, of Colleen Peters and thank you for all the work you're doing no campaign and and democracy couldn't work without people like you and groups like you so thank you thank you so much i'm uh, going to call on virgie now to introduce uh our last speaker janet so uh virgie if you could unmute and introduce oh there we go oh my god my my co-partner the one and only the probably other than me who probably have probably raised a lot of money for uh, the Biden campaign. She and I have been doing this for years. I always say that uh, um, we were on the road and I have to tell a story about he and I and when Carrie was, John Kerry was running, um, her, her son and uh, her, his, his, uh, daughter, no, his brother was married to a, one of Janice's daughters, right? And we did the state and we had so much fun. We drove all across the state doing these rallies. And uh, it was the most fun. They called us the three, well, the threesome, you know, and um, 
I would be, Jenna would start off and uh, I, I can't remember her name, but she passed away. She was wonderful and Jenna to talk about her. And I would get the raw, raw part. And we had so much fun. So we've been what doing- was these Cam Cherry's mother-in-law? Uh, yeah, Cam, Cam uh, Cherry's mother-in-law was John Cherry's brother's mother-in-law. And uh, that, was a, that was a real fun campaign. And, and I, we won Michigan, but we didn't win the campaign. But we, ever since then, we, we, wor we worked with the, the, Biden, uh, the Obama campaign, the Women for Biden. We did the Biden campaign. We did the Hillary Clinton campaign. So we've been, we've been doing this for years. And I'm so excited that she's still with us. We chaired a luncheon together. We work hard. We've been on the Biden Women campaign, uh, uh, campaign Women for Biden uh, calls every other every Thursday. So I just want you, you all, you all know her. So welcome, Janet, former First Lady of Michigan, Janet Blanchard. Thank you, Virgie. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good. Yes, Virgie and I do go uh, way back. We actually bonded over shoes about 30 years ago <laughs> and then as she said we were the Thelma Louise and Virgie team of the uh, uh, women for for carry campaign and we had a lot of fun but um, I've really enjoyed listening to everyone and all the things you are doing I think uh, the important thing is that we all find our niche of what we like to do and what we're comfortable with and uh, like you've all said, I mean, this is the most important election of our time. And uh, Jim and I have both been working. We're probably at this point spending 80% of every day on the Biden campaign. And I have been doing a lot of fundraising. I've raised over $100,000 uh, with yeah. my, my dialing ability and Jim Blanchard's name. So uh, and he's sitting here in the background laughing. So anyhow, I, again, it's so important that we all, we get all our friends out to vote for Gary. Gary will help bring in the Bi Biden vote. We've also right. been working um, really hard with Haley Stevens and Alyssa and, um, and also contributed uh, money to uh, a number of our uh, state house seats because they are important. Um, and what else? Jim's involved in uh, former, former members of Congress, um, also uh, ambassadors. He and I have been working on Democrats abroad. Um, as you know, he was ambassador to Canada and there are 700,000 Americans living in Canada mm -hmm who are eligible to vote. And so we have been part of a committee um, and a lot of Zoom meetings, uh, getting people out to vote uh, around the world. And so that also is an important vote. Um, I remember the old slogan uh, when Conrad Mallet uh, ran for uh, uh, the, uh, justice or for Supreme Court that yeah. You haven't finished your ballot until you vote for mallet. So yeah. um, I, I agree with what someone else said. Don't forget to encourage everyone to finish the ballot. Um, Mary, uh, Bridget Mary McCormick, we helped her four years ago, or maybe it was six years ago. And we know Elizabeth Welsh. We worked with her in Grand Rapids on Hillary's campaign. And so, um, I think we're all doing our part and we just cannot let up. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you're doing and uh, keep up the good work and we'll see you on a Zoom meeting or it's just so sad we all can't be together, but, but right. it's important we stay safe and, uh, and keep our eye on the prize to get Joe Biden elected. That is the prize. And so we can't deviate from that. Just keep moving forward. So thank you. Thank, thank you to all of you who, who organized this. It's, it's really been a wonderful event. And uh, thank you for inviting me.
Take care. Bye. And Janet, tell, tell, Janet, tell Jim. Tell Jim we love him too. We know he's there. He's been a supporter of the Democratic Women's Caucus. He can stick his head in and say hi if he yeah, wants. Where to. is he? He here. can say hi Come to down. us because he's we coming love, down. We Here's love down. him. He's been a big <laughs> supporter. Jim, Jim has been a big supporter of the Women's Caucus, and yes. we know it's a Women's Caucus. Oh, Vir good. Virgie's on, oh, okay, and good. Laura and, 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 and areas. And we, we, oh, yes. we want you to say hello <laughs> to the Women's Caucus. You've been a I big supporter of us. Oh wait, wait, wait. It's a Thank women's you, Jim. Caucus. You've been Hi. a big supporter of the women's caucus. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Janet's trying to get the sound up so I can hear what you're saying. Okay. Okay, now we have it. Jim, thank you so much. We know you've been a big supporter of the women's caucus. You've helped us. You've supported us over, over the years. And I, we just want to say thank you. You can say hello to us. And give us give us our marching orders. Well, I'm just glad you guys are there. You've been you've been the the, the energy for a lot of our campaigns. You know, we, you've been we, we've been working together uh, the, the three of us for actually me and you 40 years, but Janet 30. So we thank everything you're doing here. It's 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 great. It's both national party, state party, local offices. Janet mentioned we're helping as many candidates as we can. I don't want to leave out Brenda Lawrence, who's been a real tiger for Biden. This is a big deal. And, and also now Andy Levin and Dan Kildee, who you mentioned the others. Right. Uh, you know, we have a chance here to have a great, great victory. We can't let up. It's, not, it's going to be closer than people want, but you know what? We're going to win. We're going to win yeah. because we have the energy, the ideas, and the people. And you're, you're a major part of that, really. And you've been there a long, a long time, and I really appreciate it. I know most of the thinking Democrats appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. This has been wonderful. And, and I think Eva, do, is she on? Is Eva on? Is Eva? Yes, I believe so. Let me promote her so she can speak. We have uh, Eva is here. Eva and another candidate as well that would like to say hello. You got a great turnout there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bird, you got to still have uh, at least 55 on the call. That's that's great on an evening. You yeah. know, that's great. And they're doing these all around the state. So, right. and and as you know, Jill Biden is coming to uh, the Trevor City area tomorrow. So that will be a really good. I like how they're moving them around the state. That's really, really important. We're going to see a lot more Joe, too. I know that. Thank you. Okay, thank thanks, you. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thanks. On to victory. Yay. Uh, yes. Thank you. Eva, would you like to uh, speak for a minute or two here? And we also have Brian McCollum with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I was I was just prepared to watch, and, uh, and it's just been so exciting to hear how uh, motivated everybody is and and uh, just listening to people who are uh, who have just made such a difference in this election and what you're doing and and I know that for every uh, in every opportunity that I get to speak I also say the same thing uh, don't forget turn the ballot over you know go uh, vote for all of the races including the uh, university boards uh, as as I don't know if people know but I'm not for Wayne State University Board of Governors and Yay Wayne, Yay Warriors. Yay! <laughs> That's where I got my bachelor's and I got my master's in education from Wayne State. Um, I love the university. I've been involved with the university since um, the 70s, actually. I was an ad a community advocate for the Chicano Boricua Studies, which is now the Center for Latin and Latino American right. Studies. So, uh, Thank you. For, for a very long time and love the university and I hope to be elected to the board. I, I ask for all of your support. And um, yes, it's so important that we elect 
uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and all of the people that are on the ticket in Michigan. We really, really need to win this year. And, and I know our community is doing everything that we can. And Virgie is like leading everybody here in the mighty 14th. <laughs> she's, she's doing a great job as always. So thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Would Brian like to speak? Hi, this is, yeah, this is actually not Brian. This is Malak. I'm here on his behalf. Thank you so much for this really energetic call. And I, I, I'm feeling so much more pumped and ready to, to win. And I just want to reiterate what a lot of people said on this call, the importance of filling out the entire ballot. Um, Brian Masalam is an is a incumbent trustee and running for re-election. He was one of the first and um, sole voices at, at the beginning calling for, at, the, at then time, Governor Edler's resignation and just did everything he could to really amplify the voice of the survivors. So I just want you to know that um, he would love to, he would have loved to make it tonight, but he sent to, to me. So thank you very much for having me and please remember to, uh, to vote blue on November 3rd. Thank you. We're almost out of time here, but um, I'd like to maybe have anyone on any of our panelists answer a few of the questions that people put in here. Um, one of the main ones was how to find uh, more yard signs and Biden signs. Well, I can take that one. We have a lot of signs available at our county offices, our Democratic counting offices. So and the 14 district, the 14 district and districts. Right. So, you know, uh, just look us up and uh, we should be able to accommodate you. I know signs are hot now. Yeah, we have and if you live in Grand Rapids, tell people that live in Grand Rapids or Muskegon, we got we're on for Thursday, October the 1st for Kent County and Muskegon. You know, Eleanor, I see a candidate, Mary Cavanaugh. Would you put her on? Let's just let her say hello. One of our my um, our directors, yes. Mary Cavanaugh. We we we, we, we over time, Clarice. We about oh, over time. No. Oh no. We also well, vote for Mary Cavanaugh. Township too. We got it. We 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 got it. We only had an hour. We're a little bit over. Thank you all oh. for being. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Eleanor. Thanks, Thank Hannah. You, Thanks, Larry. Thank Bye. you, Virgin. Thank you, Janet, everybody. Let's go to work. It was great, guys. Thank you, Carol. Exactly. Yeah, let's, let's go win. Thanks, everybody. Let's go win. That's right. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Good night. Right. Good night. Good night. All right.